Wholeness. Welcome to my channel. My name is Rashida Silvertree and um, today's topic deals with compassion. It doesn't matter until it happens to you. Um, is that a bit a little harsh? Maybe, but um, in the area and environment that I work in right now, it deals with a lot of life, uh, life and death and illness, pretty much death and illness. Um, you know, I work in the currently work in the medical field and I recently I've seen, uh, I'm not going to say a lot of death because that's a whole spectrum because there's some areas in the world where death is every single day, hundreds of people die all the time. And then you have, you know, one or two that pass away, you know, due to, you know, natural causes or whatnot. Um, you know, it, it's a whole spectrum, but for me, it's been pretty heavy. And so, um, when in being in this environment, when you're working in the space of, uh, death and the end of life situations, and you're helping people maintain some level of comfort, um, before they transition, um, and, and meaning transition, meaning leaving the body and well, expanding beyond the human form, if you will, that's what transition is to me, um, it can be very uh, ethereal, slightly mentally numbing because you're, it's like when you're having to like give compressions, chest compressions to people and you know, and they're dead, you know what I'm saying? Like they're in the middle of dying and leaving the body and you're just kind of like, you're having to do a task. You're having to be present in what you're doing. It can be very um, out of body, not out of body, but just really surreal. That's it. So it's a, it's a surreal experience. And it death puts things into perspective real quick. Um, petty arguments, things that don't really matter uh, like your bills, your money, the person who, you know, cut you off in traffic, a flat tire, um, you know, your significant other is running late, you know, um, all these little things that are triggers for us on a daily basis just kind of are neutralized. You know what I'm saying? All the little cares that we put so much of our human energy into, we put so much of our worry and anxiety and control and ego into just kind of doesn't really matter. And that's one of the up, I think the, the pros of working in healthcare right now where I'm at is that all the little things that you think are important are not. Now, when it comes to caring about things like no one cares until it happens to them it's true you know it's true um and i i've i've seen this throughout my life like people you know we often don't think about like homeless homelessness or illness or financial ruin or you know abuse or you know all the things that that really make the human experience very difficult to exist in until it actually happens to us. And that is a huge disconnect. That's kind of like, it, it's a huge disconnect. Um, and I think it, it deals with, spiritually speaking, I think it deals with a lot of the heart, heart connection, a, a heart chakra issue where you know, compassion isn't really practiced. It's like, well, you know, I mean, Western society, a very privileged society, when we have running water, we have electricity, we have easy access to, to Wi-Fi and to the digital virtual reality, you know, that we, we have a lot. Even people that struggle, they, the resources are there. Um, so we don't, when we see someone without resources, when we see someone that's down, downtrodden and, or addiction, you know, issue, when we see someone who's struggling with addiction, it's like, okay, well, they put themselves there. They're making that decision to do that to themselves. It's a, they, it's a them problem. It's not a us problem, right? It's not a me problem. And so 
it's very interesting, you know, when that perception, that perspective shifts and changes, right? When it that same situation or a similar situation happens to us or happens to you. And so I just, I'm, it's almost like this, well, I'd like this video to be more of a reminder of have compassion for people that, that are going through really tough times and hardships. Um, even if they're choosing or may, or they've made choices that have placed them or manifested a situation due to their choices and they've placed them in, in a space of hardship. Sometimes it's completely out of their control. And sometimes they literally, the actions that they took, the behaviors that they have placed them in a certain, uh, in an un unfortunate situation. We must as human beings and beings having a human experience practice compassion. That's one thing, um, you know, working with the, you know, a lot of them, you know, my patients are mentally ill. They have a plethora of different things. A lot of them are mentally ill as well as homeless. They're addicted to drugs um, and they have multiple medical uh, um, uh, issues going on. You add all that up together. Oh, and they don't have any social um, or economic resources at all. So you deal with, I deal with patients and people and human beings that have all that going on, all at the same time. And in society, I notice, you know, even with the colleagues that I work with very closely, sometimes they're just kind of like, they get compassion fatigue. It's very easy in any line of service, humanitarian work. I define humanitarian work in public service. So if you are in the military, if you are a cop, you know, um, or a local authority, if you, um, or I'm meaning police officers, if you are a teacher, if you um, are in healthcare, there, it, it, it's compassion fatigue that can take place. You become hardened after you keep seeing, you know, the same outcome day in, day out and you you begin to look at the outer layers of of the system of the monster that that you're you're feeding pretty much right it's an industry after a while and you're just it's like the pipeline right from I know in the black community there's a thing uh, a saying where it's like from school to prison right from preschool to prison it's a, it's a pipeline you know, a lot of kids will just, um, you know, poor kids, it's a poverty issue, really, um, and a financial issue where kids are just, they go through the school, they're pumped from the school system into the streets and from the streets into prison. And then they become, you know, that's all that, that, that also is a industry, right? There's very little compassion for people who are in prison. Very, very little. Um, so you know, I, I say this to just put things into perspective um, and be neutral, be neutral, because sometimes it's like you can also overgive, overshare, and be so service minded that you bypass someone's um, and you just see their misfortune, right? You just see what's right in front of, or what's right in front of you and um, you don't get the full story and the full scope of how they ended up in that situation. Um, and in healthcare, you kind of, you're supposed to break down that, that barrier and just look at what's right in front of you. You don't judge them on if they're a criminal, you don't judge them if they're an addict, you don't judge them if they are deliberately, you know, putting themselves in a medical condition um, where they're not taking good care of themselves, not taking their medication. You just have to deal with what, with what's right in front of you and that could be very 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 disheartening um you know because it's like you offer the service but then they're not making improvements they're not making changes in their life and this isn't just in healthcare, but this is all across the board in, in education or in law enforcement or in any other you know volu not volunteer work but because you are getting paid a lot of people are have pensions and salaries you know in these public service jobs and careers but I just it kind of dawned on me it's like you know keep things into perspective because it's it's people are like a pay, less than a paycheck away from disaster or a couple paychecks away 
you know, or one salary, you know, you're not, you're, you're not too far off. Right. Um, and, um, and so, you know, I always have compassion for people. I, I, I do my best. I try my best to, um, because we're all each other. We're just mirroring ourselves back and forth, back and forth. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, you show up, you show up, and, and I think the secret to actively being a compassionate person is non, non-judgment. Um, you know, like, yeah, you hear the story, right? You hear the story, this student, this student has a history of this, and, or this patient has a history of that, you know, or this, this person, this addict, this homeless, you know, like this criminal, like you really, when you just look at the person, for what the person is, what do you see? What do you feel? What are you thinking? And then you're you're able, when you start asking them, what do you see? What do you feel? What are you thinking? Or what are you thinking? You're, you're beginning to activate, well, you're beginning to dissolve the illusion of separation when you're able to see yourself in them and they can see themselves in you. And then I'm not saying completely, you know, disregard their history or the behaviors that put them in that place. That's not what I'm saying at all. I think it, it would be very um, ignorant and unsafe and unwise to completely ignore someone's history and their behavior. Because um, that can make you in some way a victim and someone can manipulate you. <laughs> You know, um, but I, I am saying like with compassion, compassion is very powerful because you're able to place yourself in someone else's shoes. So with that, that's the message. Uh, let me know what you think below. If that touches you in any way or not, don't leave anything. I don't really care. If you like it, like it. If you don't, don't. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. See you later.